Before we end an episode of Bullseye, we'd like to leave you with a recommendation from me. It's called The Outshot. Henri Rousseau was born in 1844. For about 40 years, he lived basically as a regular guy, struggling to some extent. He served in the army without particular distinction. He worked in the civil service. Somewhere along the way, he started painting. Somewhere along the way, maybe in his late 30s, early 40s, he started painting. He was, it seems, genuinely self-taught, although he admitted to asking for advice once in a while. He was 42 years old when he first submitted to the Salon des Independents. This was an exhibition with no prizes that was a big deal in the art scene in Paris, an alternative to the government one. The only ranking at this, really, was the hanging committee. They decided where things went, what got prominent placement, and he did very badly with them. In fact, he did very badly, at least at first, with nearly everyone. He saved his clippings, all his reviews, and most of them weren't nice. One critic wrote that it seemed Rousseau must paint with his feet while wearing a blindfold. A couple of his paintings apparently were sliced with knives while they were hanging. And yet, Rousseau persisted. Every winter, he took time away from his work to paint, and every spring, he submitted work to the salon. It was never like anyone else's. And in time, some people started to take to it. The painting that moved me to talk about Rousseau is called Surprised, or Tiger in a Tropical Storm. Surprised actually has an exclamation mark. I saw it at the National Gallery in London. Rousseau showed it in the Salon of 1891. He was 47 years old. He'd been showing for five years with no particular success. It's a jungle scene. There's rain driving diagonally. Trees are being pulled across the canvas by wind. Intense jeweled greens fight in the grass with the gray sky. A few lurid red flowers bloom, and this tiger, flat and round and weird, curls around the long leaves of the grass, ready to strike. The painting doesn't have any particular sense of perspective. It's oddly flat. It's not entirely clear what the tiger is standing on. And it isn't a picture of any jungle in particular. In fact, Rousseau never saw the jungle. He basically assembled in his mind's eye plants that he looked at in the botanical garden and animals that he'd seen drawings of in books. And those are the reasons that the critics hated him. They wanted technique, and he didn't have it. If his goal was to paint what the jungle looks like, to open a window so that we could see the jungle, then, to be frank, he did a terrible job. But look at Surprised some more, and it's clear. It's not a picture of the jungle. It's a picture of the imagination. It's a picture of a dream. I mean, granted, Rousseau took sort of a shortcut. I mean, there's that line that you have to know the rules so that you can break them, and he never really got to know the rules. I mean, he never composed things right or handled perspective elegantly or, for that matter, knew how to paint feet. But these strange qualities of his paintings, they weren't just happy accidents born of ignorance. He wanted to picture the magical, emotional, more than real. He didn't want a painting of a tiger that just looked like a tiger. Rousseau wanted acceptance, but he wanted it on his terms. He wrote to a critic about going to the botanical gardens once. He said, when I go into the glass houses and I see the strange plants of exotic lands, it seems to me that I enter into a dream. That's how I feel looking at these pictures. Not even that it's a depiction of dreams, even exactly, like a surrealist landscape might claim to be. Just that it has the feeling where emotion and color and shapes overwhelm the rules. 
Ezra Pound wrote a beautiful poem about one of the jungle paintings. It's called Yadwiga on a Red Couch Among Lilies. The picture is a jungle with a woman reclining on a red couch, and Pound addresses the woman. So Rousseau, to explain why the red couch persisted in the picture with the lilies, tigers, snakes, and the snake charmer, and you, and birds of paradise, and the round moon, described how you fell dreaming at full of moon on a red velvet couch within your green tessellated boudoir. Hearing flutes, you dreamed yourself away in the moon's eye to a barrel jungle and dreamed that bright moon lilies nodded their petaled heads around your couch. But Rousseau couldn't even truly bring himself to paint something so representative as that, just a picture of a dream. He wanted to paint more than that. The poem closes like this. But to a friend in private, Rousseau confessed, his eye so possessed by the glowing red of the couch which you, Yadwiga, pose on, that he put you on the couch to feed his eye with red. Such red, under the moon, in the midst of all that green and those great lilies. In the end, Rousseau painted not a picture, not a representation of something sitting in front of him, but a feeling, just that pure aesthetic joy of color and shapes and leaves and creatures and bodies. And he knew he was right. And so when they laughed at him at the salon and when he needed money that he didn't have, played violin on the street corner for change, Rousseau still made time to paint. He showed his work and he grew in renown until one day Picasso had a dinner for him, a banquet. It's famous now, and no one at the time was quite sure if it was supposed to be a joke or not, that Picasso was having this party to honor a man who couldn't paint feet. And on that day, Rousseau stood up and told everyone that he was glad to have been invited to the party because he was the greatest painter of the modern age. And I think those folks at the dinner accepted him then because they'd seen his work and they'd met him and they could tell he was probably right. That's my outshot.